let's discuss how can we include fermions into the general relativity. So as we have discussed earlier, covariantizing a global Poincaré invariant theory may be a non-trivial task. Why so? Because uh, it may not be possible to promote the Lorentz indices A, B, C to the uh, world indices which are mu, nu and so on, right? And we'll take an example of this which is a, which is a spinner field and what happens is uh, that for a spinner field uh, the for a spinner field the GCT group it does not have any uh, uh, does not have any spinorial representations right so there is no spin representations for uh, for a GCT uh, uh, for a GCT group right and so then to embed uh, fermions fermions to general relativity it becomes uh, it becomes a very difficult task right or a, a difficult problem so to make the theory of fermions uh, uh, fermions GCT con uh, covariant right to make uh, fermions GCT covariant we should be able to make a relation between the uh, between the Lorentz coordinates and the world coordinates right so we know that Lorentz coordinates are in case of uh, in, in fermions or uh, in your normal QFT that you do for uh, uh, or QED I should say you know that these uh, ABCs are carried by uh, gamma matrices and the spinners as well so Lorentz uh, coordinates are carried by gamma matrices and spinners while we know that the world uh, coordinates are carried by the the uh, curved space time right so i'll just put this over here that these are carried by spinners and these are carried by a uh, curved space time right so this is just space time right now if you remember i have previously introduced uh, the objects that will help us to make uh, a GCT covariant uh, theory of fermions and those were something that was this thing that E mu A of X now these are well these are very important and they have a name these are called uh, the Verbians, I don't know how, if, if I'm pronouncing that right, or you can also refer to them as tetrads, right? Now, if you recall from a previous lecture, we have discussed this line element that was eta AB uh, in terms of these tetrads, it was this thing, E B nu of X, um, dx mu dx nu which was further equal to we defined a new field out of these uh, three things and that field was g mu nu of x and we had dx mu dx nu right and from this then we can immediately see that the this eta a b would be what it would be equal to well if i have to take these two on the right hand side in tensors we do that by using a dual uh, form or uh, or just i'll just replace these indices in such a way that i'll write a mu over here and a over here of x and e nu and b over here like this times your g mu nu of x right and so that's how you can write your uh, tetrads uh, with the with the g mu nu the field in uh, uh, for 
for this uh, eta a b now chosen in this way uh, the these quantities uh, that is this thing this set of these uh, tetrads this thing uh, are said to form an orthonormal verbian basis and the these connects the lorentz like indices to space time like indices so these will do the job for us right now I'll just mention some of the properties of the Verbian fields, which are that this E A mu uh, times E mu uh, B, the product of these gives you the Minkowski space-time metric, and the product of E A mu with E uh, uh, E uh, A nu gives you the um, the new field the g mu nu field right so the g mu nu metric the metric of general relativity right so furthermore there also exists an additional symmetry of transformation on the lorentz indices that of a uh, that of a local lorentz transformations and so under that uh, under that additional symmetry the verbians transforms as e prime mu uh, b of x is equal to the transformation a b lambda a b of x times e um, mu a of x now it is very clear that whenever you have an object with lorentz indices for example, let's say you have A A, you can build an object with world indices that is A mu. And you can do that simply by multiplying your A A with this, uh, this verbian E A mu uh, of X. And so this will give you uh, A mu, right? And so we have established now that if you want to go from... Uh, from uh, from the Lorentz indices to uh, world indices, you use these objects that are called the tetrads or verbians, right? Now note that this procedure can equally work when covariantizing the usual uh, tensor quantities, like we discussed previously when we covariantized matter fields and gravity, right? Now, uh, now, uh, I, I was talking about the uh, gravity and matter sector that was discussed in the previous lecture. But now we require uh, the local Lorentz covariance of the theory. So I'll do this in an analogy to the Yang-Mills theories that were discussed in the previous lectures, right? And so let's take an example of a theory of the Dirac field and we know that for a Dirac field or and also that this Dirac field will take it a flat uh, 4D uh, space time right so we know a Lagrangian for this is just uh, psi bar i gamma matrix uh, with contracted with the uh, derivative partial derivative minus m times psi now we know that the field uh, this field psi it transforms as some uh, some uh, matrix s uh, times psi and under the global Lorentz transformations with the uh, uh, with this uh, this matrix s right so uh, there are some conditions on this s matrix s and they are that s must satisfy uh, the uh, uh, the sandwiched between uh, the s dagger sandwiched between gamma naught matrices should give you s inverse and s inverse uh, gamma a um, lambda b a s should give you a gamma matrix gamma b now uh, over here again these gamma a gamma a are your four dimensional uh, gamma matrices right so these are 4d uh, gamma 
matrices. Now note that the uh, uh, first condition, uh, uh, that is this one, um, is it is given by the invariance of the mass term in this Lagrangian. So the invariance of the mass term implies this condition, right? And the second condition is simply given by the kinetic term of the Lagrangian. Now the solutions to these two uh, expressions is simply S is equal to the exponential of uh, negative I J A B alpha A B over over two yes and uh, you can verify this uh, by putting this s in these two expressions, right? And you can verify that this s is indeed the solution of these uh, of these two expressions. Over here, in this solution, uh, this uh, alpha a b, uh, this thing is is an anti-symmetric matrix, right? So what that implies is that alpha a b uh, or uh, uh, alpha B A is the negative of alpha A B and so it is an anti-symmetric matrix of the transformation parameters right and this J A B over here is your uh, or they are the generators of your Lorentz group in the spinner representation so that is that we know that from our ordinary uh, QFT uh, that JAB in spinner representation is simply sigma AB over 2, which we know we can write it in terms of the gamma matrices as a commutator relation of gamma matrices as such, right? So this comes from your ordinary QFT. Now notice that the spin generators defined in this way are anti-symmetric and they satisfy the usual commutation relations of the Lorentz algebra and you must have uh, studied this Lorentz algebra in your uh, normal QFT which is that the commutator of JAB and JCD is equal to iota eta uh, let me be careful with the indices now, eta AD, J, B, C, plus eta B, C, J, um, J, A, D, minus eta A, C, J, B, D, and minus eta B, D, J, A, C. Right? And so this is the Lorentz algebra. Uh, the commutation relation of the Lorentz algebra and so now what we shall do is uh, let me upgrade the theory of the free fermions that is uh, given by uh, given by this Lagrangian that we wrote over here where did, where did it go yeah this one right so let's upgrade the theory of free fermions and uh, we'll do that by simply gauging the Lorentz group so we require the invariance under uh, we require invariance under this s and uh, over here now this alpha a b are the functions of space-time coordinates so let me introduce a gauge field that is a mu right and also a covariant derivative d mu on psi such that this covariant derivative d mu on psi is equal to partial mu minus uh, iota g a mu this is not a cursive a this is just your a a mu uh, times psi which is then equal to uh, partial mu minus iota g over 2 j a b um, times a a b mu right and psi so we're here uh, by the way this g is your uh, coupling constant 
right? And the uh, rest of the terms, we already know what they are. So this covariant derivative, it must transform homogeneously under or with respect to the gauge transformations, that is d mu psi of x uh, is, uh, or it transforms as the S matrix on uh, d mu psi of x. So this thing will then further imply something for uh, the field A mu, uh, or it will it will in fact imply a transformation law on A mu, which would be that A mu prime uh, is equal to S A uh, mu S inverse, which is then equal to, or, uh, or it's not equal to actually, you subtract a term, which is two iota over G uh, partial mu, S and S inverse. Right. So from this point, I'll call A mu as, uh, uh, as a spin connection. And you will see that in some one way or another, it would turn out to be analogous to this Levi-Civita connection that we, uh, that we have, right? So uh, this uh, whatever indices right let's just pick some random indices so it would be somewhat similar to this thing but let's uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves so now let's make use of the tetrads or the verbians and and the covariant derivative and with that we can write down this uh, uh, this Lagrangian as uh, uh, it, it, we can make convert it into a covariant form as the as this thing that psi bar uh, iota gamma a b uh, sorry just gamma a uh, e mu a of x times e nu b of x uh, no I'm I'm doing this wrong and this thing will not come over here you'll have the covariant derivative d uh, mu minus m and psi of course so now this is the uh, covariant Lagrangian uh, what we were trying to construct right so having this now in hand the next step to building a covariant theory is to define a field strength tensor and we know or we have been defining that using the commutators of the of the covariant derivatives which is uh, this thing so it is negative iota g j a b uh, r a b mu nu now if you you remember this r uh, it is related to the scalar curvature as well and now in this case this r a b mu nu is of the form partial mu a a b nu uh, minus partial nu a a b mu plus g a a mu c um, a c b nu minus a a nu c a c b mu right and here you can see the uh, similarity of A with the uh, A which we are calling the spin connection with the Levi-Civita connection or the Christopher symbol, right? Okay, so now the apparent candidate for the gauge field Lagrangian is this thing, uh, minus one over four G, uh, which are just constants in G squared, uh, R A B mu nu R mu nu uh, A B. Right? Perfect. So we have obtained, uh, uh, we have obtained a candidate at least for the gauge field Lagrangian. And so if we had, or if we studied the usual uh, non-abelian gauge theories, at this point, we would be pretty much done with the, uh, with the, uh, with whatever we are trying to do, right? With, uh, with the story of the, of this, 
constructing a gauge uh, invariant GCT invariant Lagrange. Uh, but however, in our case, we also have the uh, we also have the tetrad or the tetrad field. So let me write it down over here. So we have to deal with this as well. And this again, it comes from the fact that we want to have a relationship of uh, fermions in general relativity. And so that's why we need this tetrads. So you, as you can uh, tell by now that we needed the tetrads to have a relationship between the Lorentz indices and the world indices and the tetrads allowed us that relationship. So using uh, this, we are capable now to construct new scalars uh, using uh, this thing and uh, uh, for uh, in, we can construct new scalars for the Lagrangian density. Uh, let's say, uh, in particular, we could uh, let me get rid of this line, it makes it look like a topic, right? So, I was just mentioning, but yeah, I was saying that in particular, we can contract both the indices of the tensor. Uh, let me write it down, in fact, over here. We can do something like this e mu uh, a e nu b and r a b mu nu so with this we can see that this is now our new uh, scalar for the lagrangian density that we have over here so uh, with this at our hand we have two ways to progress further so let me start with the first way uh, or uh, yeah i'll name it first way as well first way to proceed right and uh, that is to simply uh, impose the uh, the first uh, verbian postulate and i'll not get into the details of this right here in fact if you want i would like to i would not mind in uh, making a lecture on the uh, tetrads, right? Uh, the tetrad formulism. So uh, the the first Verbian postulate is that uh, the covariant derivative of your E, uh, the tetrad, vanishes, right? And you can write this, uh, we know that the covariant derivative is partial mu, uh, this thing minus the uh, Levisavita connections on your uh, on your tetrad, and you also have uh, for this, and uh, we have a new uh, covariant derivative for our case, and so you'll have this a uh, term as well, which is g uh, times a mu uh, and a c with uh, the Lorentz indices as well. We'll have eta c b e b nu. So this is your first Verbian postulate, right? And using this postulate, and then uh, uh, you can uh, relate the spin and world connections. But for that, let me just mention that uh, to write down that expression. I would be using uh, the I'd be using the generators of Lorentz group in a vector representation. So what that is is simply that this J uh, in vector representation uh, A B I J is equal to negative iota. Uh, delta i a uh, eta b j minus delta i b eta a j. So this will now allow us to relate the spin and world connections with the equation or an expression uh, as such uh, g a b mu is equal to e uh, new a partial mu e b nu minus 
the Levesavita connection mu nu E B alpha which is then equal to uh, your uh, well if you write this we have this thing then this thing is your simply your covariant derivative d mu and you have e nu b so with this expression or this equation you can see that we have indeed related spin and world connections together so now uh, this relation can also be used to uniquely define the Levi-Savita connections on your space-time. So for uh, for this case, we can have uh, the Levi-Savita connection alpha mu nu is equal to E alpha B partial mu E B nu minus G A, A B mu E A nu E alpha B uh, which is equivalent to using the the Levi-Savita uh, the 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 symmetric Levi-Savita connection. So I'll represent it as this thing minus G A tilde, where this uh, this A tilde this thing is your uh, is just is it's just an arbitrary function, right? So you have this thing uh, for your uh, for your uh, this uh, Levi-Savita connection on space-time, right? So I have used these above relations uh, to uh, to to define this Levi-Savita connection on our space-time. Now, with this in hand, I can further define. Uh, using this Levi-Savita connection, I can finally define my Riemann tensor, which is actually pretty good, right? Because uh, this Riemann tensor, once we have this, we uh, know that all of the general relativity or GR, rest of the general relativity, just follows from this uh, Riemann tensor. So we know we can have that from these uh, this... Uh, this uh, this new Levi-Savita uh, connection on space-time, we can write it in terms of uh, the the tetrads as e a lambda e uh, b rho times r a b mu nu, and we're done. So uh, this is the first way to actually uh, uh, to actually uh, come at or to uh, to you could say in a way to derive uh, all of the uh, GR right because we know that from Riemann, if you have the Riemann tensor we know that uh, we have a complete general relativity so now let's talk about the uh, the second way uh, to to progress right so I'll just mention it here to progress or to proceed it is to write down an action so let's write down an action that has some constant multiplied with the integral d4x uh, square root of minus g now we need some uh, we need uh, something invariant and we have uh, established that uh, if you go back over here we can use this thing right as uh, in uh, and to put in our action so let's just put that over here uh, new b r a b mu nu and so this action is it's a pretty uh, it's a, it's a pretty good action to choose right and now if i just vary this uh this action with respect to the spin connection so let me just write it over here vary with respect to spin connection which was that a right and uh, what do you get you get something like this you have your constant in front and your integral d4x square root of minus g uh, you have 
um, well, you have uh, you'll have e mu a e nu b, and you'll have your covariant derivative, uh, and this uh, this uh, change in your spin connection, which is this thing, right? And this thing is equal to zero because we are using the principle of stationary uh, action. And with this, you can see, immediately see, in fact, that this just implies that your covariant derivative of your uh, tetrads is equal to zero. And there's something funny here, because if you remember, over here, we used the first Verbian postulate and that was the first way to proceed. And what was the first word being postulate? It was that the covariant derivative of the tetrad field is zero. And over here, we considered, we took an example, we just took an action that was a pretty good action for our case. And we arrived at the same result. We arrived at the first word being postulate. And with this, uh, you can, uh, you, 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 this means actually that our choice of this action, uh, it is, uh, it seems to be a rather simplification, right? As this is not the most general Lagrangian, right? That is allowed by, uh, by a symmetry, but it's a pretty good one, but it's still, it's not the most general Lagrangian that is allowed by a symmetry. But let's say uh, if we have a Lagrangian that is more general, that is, let's write it over here. If we had this thing, uh, a r mm, of g plus b r of a plus c d mu e b nu uh, d nu e uh, mu b minus lambda if you have this lagrange uh, sorry this action uh, which is actually uh, uh, it's a more general action you will still get the same results as you have would have gotten over here so you would still see that your uh, the covariant derivative of the tetrad vanishes and then you just uh, proceed in this way uh, move further from this step right so you just follow these steps and you would arrive at this Riemann tensor. And then the rest of the general relativity just follows from this Riemann tensor. So we have basically derived uh, general relativity from a quantum field theory point of view. And that was mostly our goal. And so next time we will uh, we'll discuss um, the weak field limit of gravity.